All right, everyone, welcome back. This is Mandy, and I'm gonna to try to do some sort of a swipe using some of the new Prism Pour colors. At first, I was just gonna do a Beatles back because I like them and they're always a hit. And then I thought, well, maybe not. Maybe we'll do some weird, funky, negative space swipe with a weird shape or something. And So I really don't know what we're gonna to do, to be perfectly honest, but let me go ahead and put the paint down and I'll show you as I go. If you missed the color preview, they I uh, showed you all of the Prism Pour colors on the most recent video, if you want a quick preview. I also have the link of the set below. You can also buy them in um, larger bottles, and in the individual bottles, so however you want to get them, they're gorgeous. Can't wait to see them in use. And um, so I'm just going to put my pillow paint down and we're going to kind of start going for it. And then um, I used too much pillow paint, but the last time I did that kind of worked out because I got this weird, I swiped really weird and I actually kind of needed more of it to come off. So, you know, sometimes it works out. So I'm using the Bloom Recipe. Um, if you're not new to my channel you're probably aware of that but if you are using the bloom recipe i do have a video link in the description box below showing you generally um kind of what ingredients i normally use and doesn't mean that they're always the same but um just i get a lot of questions about that so i created that to hopefully be more helpful and I'm going to try not to get dirty because, you know what, I should put on an apron. Okay, because I have like some workout clothes on from earlier and like I usually wear painting clothes because I am that person that gets that messy, you know what I mean? So I'm going to do a little bit of Willy Wagtail Black Boom Gel on the bottom. <clears throat> Stop it. So I'm using a 12 inch MDF round I have taped up at the back. Um, I'm going to put kind of a multicolored darkish layer down. <laughs> Hi, pretty girl. My dog is being very affectionate right now. And, um, Kind of like I would if I was doing a Beatles back. Um, only with a Beatles back, usually, which I learned I learned this from Shelly, so it's not something I came up with on my own. But usually with a Beatles back, you put like a dark layer down, usually black or whatever. Then you put your interference colors kind of in the middle. So they shimmer around, you know. This is Global Deep Sea, by the way. This is one of my favorite paint colors and I get that from pixel paint designs anyway and so with the with the Beatles back concept you put the your interference colors and then you put a little bit of a black puddle on the top and then usually you use white cell activator to kind of blow everything out or swipe it out anyway it looks like just amazing this is indigo from Matisse and um I love them, but, and I've done them with kind of the, the purple and blue and black in the bottom. At, when I did a swipe, it turned out really cool. But my thought was to kind of start that approach, but with like a negative space swipe thought process. And um, uh, I don't know if I brought black cell activator. I just kind of covered up that deep sea. I'm gonna to have to add some more. So yeah, I don't, I don't know if what I'm saying is making any sense, but that's kind of my idea. And then instead of covering the whole thing, maybe we only cover part of it and do something kind of funky, negative space-ish. So. I don't know if that makes sense to y'all or if it's going to work out like I have it in my head or not. 
We'll see. Um, I also don't have black cell activator over here. Okay. Anyway, I am going to use a little bit of this Bohemian Sea color, which is one of the new Prism Pour colors as well. Um, so, Mother of Pearl, we're going to kind of sprinkle some of these on. This is kind of the pearl color. So French silk is um, sort of like a pearl color that's a little bit more creamy with inter like an interference gold shift. So we're going to put this one down. And I think I'm going to try to clean up a little as I go. I need to not have such a colossal mess here in a second. I would say that, but then. So then we're gonna do minty tea next, which is gonna be like a green. And if you saw the video where I showed them to you, they have a very slight kind of grayish color to the base, which if you have ever used some of the bling it colors, the rain and the angel wings and Luna and all that, they have kind of a similar gray pearl base, which makes them so much fun to work with. So this is great because it brings those super cool colors into like a paint, an actual paint form. So next up is morning, let's use Misty Veil. Vale. Misty Veil vale is gonna have more of a violet shift. I just stirred these up. So if you saw my last video, I explained that I used Valspar Reserve um, because that's what I already had kind of mixed up. And Valspar Reserve kind of looks cloudy at first when you mix it, but when it dries, it dries clear. So where it might look a little cloudier now, it won't dry that way. So now we're gonna use Morning Light, which is gonna be the bluer shift, you see? Now these might look just kind of like a bunch of grayish pearl right now, but under that light, especially after they dry and the resin and all that it's gonna be an incredible you'll you'll be like whoa that's assuming I swipe it right and the more I don't get to paint the more out of practice I tend to get you know so this one is gonna be fire nice I think this one is probably my favorite and it's gonna have like that interference red so Okay. Okay, okay. Now, I'm on the fence as to whether or not to use a black and white cell activator or put some black boom gel on my palette knife with my cell activator. I'm kind of afraid it'll take over, but I've, in fairness, not ever done that. I have a goop in here. There it is. Let's get it out. Let's shift this guy over here. I obviously have a lot of paint on here. So before we do anything else, we're going to add Bohemian C. Just kind of around. It's going to give us a little, little contrast, and it's such a pretty color. I have a big paint snot booger in here. How rude. Let's take him out. Okay, so let me put this away. I'm tempted to add other colors in, but that's what, five, six of them? That's a lot, it's a lot of sparklies. 
All right, now I'm gonna put some of those regular paint colors on the top. Oh my gosh, my dog's trying to kill me. I'm putting her bone right underneath my stool, so when I step down, it's right there. So, I'm thinking, I'm thinking we're gonna put a little bit of this deep sea here. Bless you. Okay, a little more indigo. I think we might use a double cell activator because I'm not putting a ton of color up here. Put a little boom gel up here. It should make it sell up pretty nicely. Um, I don't know how this is gonna turn out, you guys. The other thing is, I'm doing this as if I'm just use up the rest of this. I'm doing this as if I'm swiping from the, like I'm swirling from the center, but I'm not doing that. So kind of have to broaden a little bit here. Yeah, okay. I'll do that with the other stuff too. Because I need it to show. I think I am going to have to use a black and white spell activator. I'm just externally processing in case that sounds like I'm talking to myself. Um, get back in there. And use a little bit of the indigo. Woo -wee. Need to be a little less sloppy, right? Because if we end up having any negative space, <laughs> it's gonna maybe not need to look like this. Okay. I also brought some Manicrad Blue Boom Gel, which is kind of like, a, it's sort of in the middle of like an indigo and a blue black. It's sort of maybe like a, Um, not a phthalo blue, that's not, that's not what I'm looking for. Like a Prussian blue? Okay, a little more boom gel around here. I think we'll use, instead of black and white, I think we will use blue, black, and white. Live a little, right? Experiment. Now it looks like all that's covered up, but most of those paints are a transparent paint. So if you're like, you just put all those pretty colors down and then you covered them up, don't worry. The paints are relatively transparent and that will make a difference in how the color peeks through. Now I am a little concerned about where I might have some negative space because I have spattered paint everywhere but some of these are pretty small spots so and they're probably going to fly off so i probably should not focus on those so let me just clean my knives for my, my little paint thing my jiggers i'm going to use this guy today i think because i kind of like the way he gives you some funky shapes sometimes okay so i'm going to use Atelier Interactive Cell Activator. Let me move my stool out of the way. And um, um, I need to clean my gloves again. And I'm going to load the palette knife with the white on the top. Maybe. Yeah. The white on the top because I want that one to go down last. I'm really torn between. That's Graham. I don't want that one. Um, like part of me so loves blue black that I want that to be the dominant cell activator, but I have all of this dark stuff right here. 
So I'm a little apprehensive about making blue-black the dominant color. So let me go with my original plan, and if it's wrong, then we learn from it. So my cell activator, since I'm using a heavy body paint, is about four parts um, Australian Floetrol to one part the Atelier Interactive Paint. I get that on Blick's website. I have a link for Blick below. If you shop through our link, it helps our channel. Um, they have cool promotions all the time. You don't get like a special promotion for using um, my link per se, but they do have cool promotions all of the time. Um, and they are very reasonable. When I first started, I'm in the US, when I first started paint pouring, I used to like dollars and cents coupons from Michaels. And then I realized, oh my gosh, there's, you know, there's Jerry's and Blick that are way cheaper than Michael's. So I learned, but it took me like a year. I used to drag my husband to Michael's and do coupon coupon frenzies all the time. And of course, Michael's doesn't even have some of the paints that I use now. Oh no, what did I just do? Oh my gosh. Okay, so I'm just gonna drizzle the blue on top of the white, which means that the white will be the most dominant. There is some sort of goober in my cell activator. I think it's like paint from the side. Like what is happening today? I'm so freaked out that that might be on here. Okay. Anyway, time is of the essence here already leaked cell activator out onto my puppy pad. So the white should be the most dominant, but this is kind of what it looks like. So you know what I just realized? I didn't do this the right way to use a funky palette knife swipe. Oh my gosh, you guys, am I brain dead today or what? I wanted to do some sort of a funky shape, and normally when I do that, I do it in a line first, and then I just realized I put all that paint down like I was gonna swipe it. So then it wasn't until I went to go swipe it that I was like, I, I literally set that up entirely wrong. Oh well, so this, this, one, this is an indication of how overwhelmed my brain is this week. I've had a lot of stuff going on. So, <laughs> this may be a fail, but let's see. Okay. Uh-oh, that was a little too harsh. This is doing okay. I can't tell if I just have cell activator here that's too thick what it looks like or if I went through the pillow paint. So give me a little bit to sort through this in my brain. Now what I'm doing is just kind of breaking the surface tension in some places. I have a lot more of a sheet of white cell activator that should spread out like lacing. I didn't really intend it to look like this. So this may do very little to accomplish what I was going for, but it's okay. <sighs> Popping bubbles, seeing what develops in this part. I kind of had to take a really weird roundabout approach. Um, this in the middle might get bigger, which is okay. It's It doesn't have like any holes or anything. So right now we're seeing a lot more of the colors we put on the top, but as we spin this out, that should change. Now, I intended for this to be kind of negative spacey, but as you can see, that's probably not gonna be a thing. But just in case, just in case we have any negative space on the edges, I'm just gonna clean this up a little bit. 
I don't think that we will have any. That's definitely going to fly off. This. <laughs> this may just be weird. It's not the paint's fault. It's the artist's fault. I am concerned about this part. It should break up in a second, but I'm wondering if some of that's pillow paint. Like right here's not. But honestly, even if it doesn't break up, it kind of works. It kind of looks intentional. It's not, but it looks like it. Oh my gosh, I just like planted my watch in, no I didn't, I thought I planted it in paint. I was like, oh my goodness, did I have any more issues today? <sighs> okay. Um, Well, I'm just trying to break the surface tension where all this white is, but this is my theory. This is gonna turn out to be regular swipeish looking. Most of this stuff here, where a lot of this more opaque looking white is, is gonna come off. So then we're gonna have some kind of diversity in cells, which I think is pretty cool for a swipe. So this may be one of those times that you see me swipe it and you're like, what are you doing, Amanda? And then it, we get to the end and you're like, eh, it worked out after all, you know? We have a lot of those moments. So let's just get to spinning before y'all get really bored and see what happens, right? So let's give it a little spin a -roo. I want to control it because I want to control what we lose. I don't want to lose too much more of this. I don't know if we can control this. There's a glob of something right here. This may be the thing I was trying to deal. Oh my gosh, you guys. <clears throat> Did you see that? That was a whole big glob of paint. Now I kind of want to see some different action from this right here. So let's just... I really like this. I don't entirely want to lose that. We will lose some of it, unfortunately. I'm trying to get some of these bubbles before they pop and leave like these white pit holes. Okay, let's give it another little spin. Mm, that wasn't a little spin at all. Okay, so you will be able to see these colors, just not as well as I hoped when I started. So no negative space, really, to speak of. We do want to lose a little bit of what's on that white edge. So we're just gonna help it a little bit. It's gonna, I don't mind this. This is what kind of needs to go. I like white cell activator. It's just not usually my first choice on a swipe unless there's certain criteria. So the only bummer I have here is it's gonna be really difficult for you to see these colors at first. When it dries though, you'll be able to see them and they're gonna shine through this kind of funky lacing part a lot. But I don't wanna overspin this and mess up the composition much more. So 
you're gonna kind of have to trust me. When I bring you in for a close up, you're gonna see them peeking through. Oh, I just found another paint booger. But this was intact, so I still, I think this is beautiful. But the desired effect that I had for it to show you all of those colors peeking through um, would have worked great if I had started off correctly in my efforts. I just started laying paint down like I was doing a regular swipe and then I didn't do a regular, well I did, but not on purpose. So anyway, but you can still see them. They're super pretty. I'm trying to fix where I just picked that up. And the color choices are really cool. And I think as it dries, those colors will really come through. And I always post um, dry resin results when I finally get around to resining things on my Facebook group and various other Facebook groups. So you're welcome to join. The link is listed below. It's Fluid Art Friends. But I'm going to pop some bubbles. I need to see if we have enough off the canvas. We may need to do one more gentle little, little fling here. I kind of like this. It kind of looks like, you know, layers of rock or something. So I don't want it to entirely go away. I kind of like how different the cells are. Um, they kind of follow a line and then they get smaller in some sections, bigger in others. I, I kind of like that. And I like how there's like this dark area and kind of a light area. So I think there's a lot of cool movement in this painting. It is just completely different than what I had in mind going into it, but that's entirely my fault because I didn't lay down my color with the intention of swiping the way I had in my head. So we ended up doing something different, worked out. We can, you know, call it Bob Ross and call it a happy accident if we want. So let me pop some bubbles, bring you down for a close up. And if I can get my gloves clean enough, I may not be able to do that. Ha! Huh. Need to get some more wipies. But then I will be right back if I can pause my camera. My gloves are so dirty. Cannot. Okay. All right, everybody, so let me show you. I still think this turned out really cool. Very different than what I wanted, and I still have a lot of bubbles. So here's just kind of a bird's eye view. I like all the movement in it. So you can see the sparkle when we get down here. You see all that? Look at that, look at the, sp look at the color in that. Woo! My dog is kind of nagging me to feed her, so if you hear her, look at that. So, yes, our cell activator kind of created a weird sheet of color, but look underneath the transparency of that. Do you see all that? Look at that. Look at that. So, when it dries and it gets resin, look at that little piece right there. There's going to be a lot of really cool color popping through. Look at all that color right there. So, like I said, I was watching Tammy a minute ago and she was talking about interference colors being kind of like a surprise color, like they sneak up on you. And they do. So, like, they might look kind of unassuming until you pass by them a certain way. Look at this tiny little cell right here. Look at all the color in that cell. Ooh, can you tell I love these paints? Look at that. You can also use a little bit of prism pour paint in resin. You shouldn't use more than like 10% acrylic paint in resin, but with a beautiful paint that has some transparency like that, they work beautifully if you just don't overdo the ratio. Look at all these cute little cells. Look at that pearl looking stripe. See, you can't see all that until you kinda get closer up, but as it dries, it's gonna be even more noticeable. Look at all the iridescence in there. So, and I kind of like this funky little edge. So let me know what you think. Look at all that color. 
So let me know what you think. I mean, different than what I wanted, but they're still they're still showing through. I think they're very cool. And these little 12 inch MDFs look really cool on a little easel. They're kind of like the perfect size. I mean, you can put some hanging stuff on the back and put them on the wall, but I like them on little easels. I think they look really neat. So yeah. And we have had some more cells develop in that weird white part. Some pretty cute ones actually. I like the variation of cells that we have in this piece. Look at all that. So yeah, very different than what I started off thinking. But I still really like it. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. And uh, thank you for all your support.